Book Club. It is my favorite Tuesday night of the month. It is book club time. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I am so excited that we get to talk about books tonight. It's one of my favorite things. So here's what we are discussing tonight. If you are just joining us, we are going to be talking about this book, The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Um, I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I did. I think I say that every month, but that's because I pick the books every month. Um, I love this book and I can't wait to talk to you about it. Um, we don't have the author this time, boo. Um, she had to cancel due to family issues that she had and I'm kind of sad that we don't get to talk to her but I did find one interview with her on YouTube that was excellent and she basically answered all my questions on um, the YouTube and so I'll just tell you the answers because I know your questions are the same questions as mine and then we are just going to spend the night talking about books because this book is about a list of books straight away in the book we have this list of books and it says just in case you need it and then it's a list of eight books and so one of the things that i thought would be really fun to do tonight is to talk about what are your books if you were going to make a list a just in case you need it list what books would you put on that list we're going to talk about this book then we're going to talk about our list and we do have a special guest joining us um to talk about her list and that is my favorite and your favorite Emily Jennings, my big sister, she's going to join us here in a little bit. This book was written by Sarah Nisha Adams and um, she lives in London and she's actually a book editor and so this was her first book that she had written and I heard her say that this book was partially inspired by her relationship with her grandfather. She talked about how um, she grew up in an Indian family in England and her um her, some of her family spoke a different language than she spoke in her, her, grand, her grandparents. And she would um, always try, hi, Emily, I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to pull you on in just a few minutes. She talked about how she, um, her grandfather would always try to connect with her and always try to talk to her, um, even though there was a language barrier. And he would always ask her about her books. And she talked about how she was very shy child but she um, loved reading and loved going to the library and just lived in books and she talked about how she could always um, she couldn't always talk to people but she could always talk about books endlessly and so that's kind of like part of the inspiration for this book and um, she also this is so funny guys because if you read this book you're gonna know exactly immediately what i'm about that it's gonna connect with you she loves lists and she has a friend that connects lists collects lists and that was one of the funniest things in this book to me was the one person that was always collecting lists and like she would pick up does anybody remember that part she would always pick up grocery lists or a list that she would find on the subway and if she um, found a grocery list, she would try to figure out what the person was making for dinner. Does anybody remember this part? And um, the funniest thing happened is a couple weeks later, Abby and I were in the grocery store and we picked up um, the cart and in the cart, somebody had left their list. And I was like, oh, Abby, I just read a book about this. Abby is very patient and she lets me tell her all about the books that I read. And. Um, so I said, I just read a book about this and there was a girl in the book who collected, um, she said she collected lists and, and I was telling Abby all about it and she thought that was really great and she tried to guess what the person was making with their list. But I just have to say, you guys, that that list was so disappointing because it was like apples, lettuce, bleach wipes, milk. And I don't know what kind of recipe you would make with that, but that's that. This book is so wonderful because it's a book about books. It's like meta. It's a book about books, about books. It's about thinking about books. It's about talking about books. And I just thought it was absolutely delightful. Um, you have this story about this grandfather 
who is trying to um, connect with his granddaughter through books, which we already established, is partially from um, the uh, part of the author's childhood. And then you've got this girl who's working in the library and she doesn't really read, but they come across, she comes across this list and she starts reading the books on this list. And it's these two lonely people and they come together and um, fiction sort of brings them together and unifies them, gives them something to think about and talk about and to get their mind off of the heavy things that are going on in their lives. And it's just such a wonderful book. It's a book about the, the story, how stories bring us life and bring us healing and get our minds on other things. And I just love it. Anyway, okay, moving on, the book list. So here are the books on the list and this is what I wanna know. I'm gonna read you the book list, which if you've read the book, you know these books. But I wanna know which ones, put it in the comments, which ones um, have you not read? Okay, we'll start there. Which ones of these books have you not read? I, there, there are eight books on the list, there were, there were three, and I actually am gonna say there are nine books on the list. So let's start with the list. The list is To Kill a Mockingbird, Rebecca, The Kite Runner, Life of Pi, Pride and Prejudice, Little Women, Beloved, and A Suitable Boy. Those are the books on the reading list in our book. So I wanna know which ones have you not read? Oh, and bonus number nine is The Time Traveler's Wife. Now, the story opens up with this, our main character, his name is Mukesh, and he's, um, his wife has passed away and his three adult daughters are helping him clean out his house. And so Mukesh, um, they find under the bed, his wife was an avid reader, um, an avid library goer. And so um, they find the time traveler's wife under her bed and it's a library book. And so he gets it and he's gonna take it back to the library. And um, I, when in the podcast that I listened to with the author today, she said that the time traveler's wife was actually on the list and then she needed a way to kind of get into the story. And so she took it off the list and put it under the bed. And I thought that was really interesting. So I had decided that this summer I wanted to read through all of these books because I thought that the author of the ones that I had read, I thought that the author did such an incredible job at making you want to read these books like she didn't tell you too much about them um but she told you enough about them that if you hadn't read it you could follow it but the ones that you had read you were totally into and the ones that you hadn't read you kind of wanted to read and so i made a goal i was like i'm gonna read the books that i haven't read on this list well i've only read one of them so far i've read one and i've started one so i read the time traveler's wife i had never read that before i know many 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 of you have probably read The Time Traveler's Wife. I thought it was pretty good. I would not put it on my list, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I'm not into time travel. I'm not into sci-fi. As you guys know, I don't think I've ever picked a science fiction book. Ooh. Anybody have a science fiction book that they would recommend to our book club? Just putting it out there. I've never picked a science fiction book, so I wouldn't pick The Time Traveler's Wife. But I, I, I think I would say I enjoyed it. Um, so I started with The Time Traveler's Wife because I'm like, oh, I'll go in order. But then I would, I just get, you know, when you're picking your next book, you gotta pick something that like strikes you in the moment. And so I didn't go ahead and read any of the other ones yet. So here's what I have read. I have read To Kill a Mockingbird, loved it. I have read Rebecca, enjoyed it. Very like, um, it's a gothic novel and kind of, you know what I will say about Rebecca? Uh, that this book, The Reading List, made me understand it better and maybe be like, oh yeah, that was a pretty good book. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You can read a book and it not really resonate with you and then when somebody else talks about it, you're like, oh, yes. So anyway, that's how I felt about Rebecca in this book. I have read it and there's, if, if you wanna skip the book, and watch the show, there was a Netflix, I think it was a show or maybe it was a movie um, that they did very recently with the beautiful girl from Downton Abbey, Rose from Downton Abbey. I can't remember her real name in real life, but she plays um, the main character. 
Rebecca is a ghost in the book. Well, like kind of like a dead woman. Um, anyway, I would say watch that show. Don't read the book. But, you know, if you want to read all these books, go for it. Um, okay, so Rebecca, I read. The Kite Runner, I read. Very heavy book. I don't remember that much about it, but I did like it. But when I was done with the book, I was like, oof, I don't think I can read another book by this author. But then I did about a year, two years later, read another one of his books, and I'm gonna talk about it later. Um, Life of Pi, I've never read it. Now, um, I would, the comments are so far behind right now. Like, I, Will Wilson, I just saw your comment come through to say hi to that other guy who joined us like 10 minutes ago. So I hope Emily and I have a good connection. Um, but Life of Pi, I have never read it. And um, I started it with Abby and it was a little heavier than I thought and she was kind of bored, but we are going to push through because bajillions of people love Life of Pi. I mean, I would want to know if you've read Life of Pi and if you think that me and Abby will like it. But I mean, literally bajillions of people have read The Life of Pi. And I don't know why I never read it before. I think I just wasn't really, I think I thought it was talking animals. Maybe it still is talking animals, but that's why I didn't read it. But after reading this book, I'm like, I have to read The Life of Pi if it made her her list, right? Um, and then Pride and Prejudice, of course, we all love that classic. I've read that. Little Women, I've read that. Um, Little Women is my mother-in-law's favorite book. And I would say Little Women is um, a, a great book. I actually really loved the movie, talking about books and movies, the last movie that they put out. Um, I can't remember who was in it, but the, the most recent version of Little Women. Um, and so, but I, I, I enjoyed the book. It was very slow. Lisa Hughes, on the other hand, she was like, she tried to read it. She was like, it's the only book I've ever asked her to read that she didn't finish. So Lisa Hughes is not a Little Women fan. Um, okay, then uh, Little Women, Beloved uh, by Toni Morrison. I have not read. I have it in my library my audible library and i haven't read it and i am going to read that book and then the last one is a suitable boy which guys help me here but i couldn't find that on audible and if it's not on audible ooh, i don't know i don't know if i'm going to be able to read a book that's not like i actually have to use my eyes to read a fiction book i don't know if i can do it so um so a suitable boy but then i saw that it's like a show I can't remember which network, but it was like a, sh a show that they made out of it. So I was like, well, maybe I'll watch this show and that will count. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I'm spending a lot of time talking about this reading list. But, um, incidentally, I heard Sarah Nisha Adams, the author, say that she chose these books um, because they were books from her high school that she had read in high school. And she said she wrote the list down really fast, like whatever came to her mind off the top of her head, books that she had like lived with those characters and thought about those characters. And so um, I thought that was really interesting because one of the main questions that I wanted to ask the author was, why these books? Like of all the books in the world, I don't think I would have put the kite, I mean, I know, I wouldn't have put the kite runner on my list. Would you have put the kite runner on your list? I mean, it's a great book, but it's sad and hard to read and so i i don't know i don't think i would have put the kite runner on my list um so but i wouldn't say her list was boring um but anyway she said she just thought of books that she had read in high school i guess she's trying to like go with the vibe of the one of the main characters in the book i forget her name alicia and um she said she just wrote down the the first books that came to her mind and it was these nine books including the um including the um the time traveler's wife and so, but what I loved about it is as she's talking about these different books within our story, the characters would come to life and they're uh, like Mukesh would, there was one time where he was like, I wonder what Atticus would, would what, what wisdom Atticus would give in this situation. And it was so funny to me because it's so true when you are into a book and you're really into it. It's even when you're not reading it, you're like thinking about these characters. They're like your friends and, and you're wondering what they would do in this situation. It's just the beauty of, of a book, the beauty of, of fiction. And so I just thought it was so wonderful how the characters followed the characters in the book. And um, I just thought it was amazing. So, okay. So here's what I want to do. Um, 
I want to bring Emily on and I want Emily and I to talk about what books we would put on our list. We could talk about this book, the reading list forever. Emily, my sister, if you don't know her, she's going to come on and I asked Emily, so I made a list of my books that I would put on a list. Now guys, I'm sorry, but I could not keep it down to eight. What I did was, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did nine fiction books, and then I did five memoirs because I do really, really love a good memoir. I mean, I just love a good memoir. So I told Emily, make your list, and let's talk about our lists. Hi, Emily. Hi. So, okay, I'm gonna start, but. Okay, should we start with like our number one book that no, we love? No, I cannot. It's like it's like rating your children. You can't. You don't have a number one. Rate books, yeah. Okay. Well, I have a number one, so I okay. can start with mine. But yeah, I know you love that one. So this would be if I'm putting it in the same category. I cannot tell you how many times I've read this one. Okay. First yeah. of all, I've never read Harry Potter. Oh. I've only read, I've read the first couple chapters several times. This um, is, I've read it so many times. You've read it to each of your kids, right? Yeah, and I think I read it numerous times to Silas more than once. So yes, I think I've read it out loud like seven times. Okay, same with this book. I've read, yeah. I taught this book. I read it to all my kids. It's like so, a rite of passage in this house. And if you have never read this book before, so this, this is a kid's book. But if you have never, look, this was from when I taught school. I put my name in the, in the book. I have, gave me a classroom copy. Oh, look at this. See how that says, um, I don't know if you can see that that said Walker. That was when I um, was a student teacher. That was my teacher I was assigned to. That oh. was her. It was when it um, told me about this book. Again, Holes. And everybody needs to read this book. I hope you haven't seen the movie first. No, because the movie's not even nearly as good. No, but it's, it's a pretty good version of a book. I love like this, that book. Oh, I love this book too. Okay, so there's there's one of mine. Okay, I'm I'm gonna give you my my second. And now this book that I'm gonna show you, you already know this is one of my favorites. I mean, most of you know because I always oh, this. Nightingale. I the Nightingale. Now look, my husband. I think this is a signed copy. Let me see. Stephen gave me this book. Yeah, signed. Chris and Hannah. But it's um. Here you go. Chris and Hannah wouldn't come on my book club, so I'm kind of, I'm still kind of mad at her about it. But um, I wonder if I reread this book, if I would like it as much as I did the first time, because I've only read it once. But if oh, you really? love historical fiction, if you love historical fiction and you have never read this book, The Nightingale, this needs to go to the absolute top of your list. It's World War II, it's about two sisters and the French Resistance. Did you read this book? Oh, yes. Yes. Did you love it? I love that book, but of her books, I love, and it's on my list, The Great Alone, I love more than that one. Okay, so The Great Alone is on your, like, top eight. Abs top. I think it is a must read. I felt cold reading it. I felt, I, I, the feelings that I had in that book were everything. I love The Great Alone. I also loved her, her latest book, The Four yes. Winds. Four wins. That was I'm really a huge cool. Kristen Hanna fan. I've read a lot. Of, I've I've read a lot of her books, and she's good. And I, they're also different. I, she's a great writer. Yes, agree. Okay, you go. Okay, okay. This is another kids' book, but it's also I don't know how many times I read it. You know what it is? Not the Christmas. Not Christmas. Anne of Green Gables. The Westing oh, Game. the Westing Game. This is so funny, Emily. I because love this book. I do I, love that book. I love this book. It's one of my very favorites. It is a great whodunit, like yeah. clue style book. Not that no. It's, it's so good. I love that one. I yeah. tried to read it to my kids though and they didn't like it. I love it well, as a kid. I tell them I don't care. We're still reading it. I've made them read it. I've also read that one numerous times. Okay. Here's another um, kid's book for me. Is this a kid's book? Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. She's the best. And you know what else, Emily? I watched the movie of this before I read the book. That's true. I did because we watched that movie so many times when we were little. Yes. 
And yeah. so anybody else out there love Anne. I love Anne. But I, did you ever read any of her other ones? Yes. We read it when we, when we were on the road. We read Marilla. R Rilla, yeah. remember? We Marilla. Had to read Rilla. Yeah, we, Rilla. I read the first one and the last one. Yeah. I think that's all. Yeah. Um, oh, I just love Anne. Yeah. And the audiobook is read by Ma Rachel McAdams. Yeah. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay. I love it. Um, what do you okay, have? We're fiction. Let's see. I couldn't, I, I think, um, okay, somebody asked about a sci-fi and one of my top 10 favorite books is The Martian. I Yes, I know you like that book. I love it. I love I, that book. I don't really like sci-fi, but that book gripped me. I could not. But I already saw the movie. And I hadn't. Yeah. I so love I, that shouldn't, I shouldn't go back and read it if I already saw the movie. Probably not. Most people say it's boring because there's a lot about growing potatoes in Mars, but I was fascinated by it. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one of mine. I'm curious to know if this is on your list. Yes, it's on my list for sure. Okay. You can never get reading that one for the first time. No, no. And I don't typically love, you know, trilogies. Yeah, I didn't. I and I didn't. I read all of them. I didn't like any of them except this one. But this is truly, if you have never read The Hunger Games, yeah. even if you've seen the movie, if you've never read The Hunger Games, you can read it hands up. down. Oh, yeah. I, I've I've read it. Well, I read it once, and then I read it to Abby. Yeah, and I all oh, of it. It's so good. Oh my! Truly, kids. I don't know how this woman wrote this book. Truly, one of the greatest stories ever in Kyle's <laughs> series. <laughs> that my kids also like that she wrote before the Hunger Games and they all like it. Which one? Susan Collins, the author. I don't remember yeah. what it is. They, they oh. love it. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Um, hey, let's see. I know, okay, another one that I love. Well, okay, let's see. I have one that I think you love also. I don't know if it's on your list, but The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. Yes my favorites it's one I can't and it's about sisters we really like sister books obviously <laughs> but, but I love that one because I love that the girls even get kicked out of the Quaker church because they are just like standing for what's right and what they believe in I love that book 100% I agree um so um how about let me let me do this one I'm curious to know if this is on your list because this is another book that I wish I could read again for what? the first time oh I it's not on my list, but I do love that book. But I definitely so, read the end of that book. I, I definitely read the end. <laughs> um, I had to understand. I'm like, what is going on with these pies? I don't understand. Yeah, I read the end of that one. So if you've never read this book, it's about, um, it's about women during the civil rights movement. And um, right. it was so good. Emily, your comments are coming through. <laughs> like 30 minutes ago um so the help I, I I wish I mean like seriously I I would put this I would I I love talking about books but if I was making a list of books yeah. for my Recommend. daughter or my husband of like if you want to know things that I love just in case you need it yeah. I would definitely put the help on 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 that one all right what's another one um another one that I love that I know you didn't love as much as me but the red tent that was yes. like a fictional story from the Bible, but it wasn't really, it wasn't from a Christian perspective, but it was about the women in Jacob's life. Mm -hmm. I just love that. I love the perspective of these women that you don't really read much about in the Bible. I love that one. I, I liked that book, but I wouldn't put it on my list. Somebody just did the funniest comment. I just have to read this. It's actually not funny. I just love it. This is uh, Adonis. I don't know how to say her name. This is the coolest book club ever. What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's um, we're at a dinner at the university president's house. And I was like, guys, I'm sorry. I've got to go to book club. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, okay. Another one that I don't own a copy of because I did audible on it um, is kin to same author of the life of Pi, but what? actually on my list of my top nine fiction books, A Thousand Splendid Sons. Yeah, I haven't read that. Okay, I just wanna say, if I were advising you. I'm going to read the list. Okay, if I were advising you, of all, everybody on book club tonight, if you have not read The Kite Runner, skip The Kite Runner, 
and oh, read a thousand splendid songs. But Mukesh loved this one. I know, but I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, here's the thing. The Kite Runner is about two men. They're best friends. Don't about come two men. That's okay. what I'm going to say. A Thousand Splendid Sons is about two women. All right. I'm and read it. they are sister wives. And oh, I, love, I love a good I'm telling you, Emily, <laughs> I spent probably an hour, I spent probably an hour retelling Abby the entire book one day and she was so into it and when I I hadn't finished it and when I finally finished it I went and she had gone to bed but she wasn't asleep yet and I yelled to her I was like Abby come here I have to tell you how this book ended <laughs> it has the most it's sad it's very sad it's okay. very dark it's hard to read but it is about two women and the end of the book it is I'm telling you Wait, I, I have goosebumps what's the setting about. What's the setting? Um, it takes place in Afghanistan. Oh, okay. It's about two Afghanistani, did I say it? No, Afghan women. Yeah. And okay. it's, it starts out in like the 70s, I think. Uh, it is marvelous. I, I wish that our comments, people will, I mean, later, they'll just go crazy. Because A Thousand Splendid Sons, I know Lisa Hughes read it. She loved it. In fact, Lisa Hughes and I read The Kite Runner together. And she liked it. So she read A Thousand Splendid Sons. And she told me, she was like, A Thousand Splendid Sons was better. And I was like, I can't read another one of this guy's books right now. I It's too much for me. And uh, so then like two years later, I read it. And I'm telling you, it's just such a beautiful story. Okay. So, okay. okay. Player one. Oh, I didn't get that book. It's in my kids' room. I love that book also. It's on I never my read that book or or watched the movie. The movie totally sucks. It's one of the worst movies ever. But oh, the okay. book read by Will Wheaton, that's the guy from Never Ending Story. Okay. And so it's and it's so nostalgic. It's I absolutely love that book. Okay, I'm writing it down. Ready? Yeah. Player. One and that was kind of science fiction, right? Yeah, kind of science fiction or in futuristic. It's really good. I love okay. it. Okay. All right. So here's one of mine. I don't know if you've read this book. This is we're going back to memoirs, and um, a lot of people don't even know that this is a book because they have watched the show. I, you did read this book, I remember. Oh, oh, I already know. Ready? Oh, call the midwife. Your cover is different than mine. Okay, guys, if you like memoirs. About women. <laughs> Sorry to all the guys. This is why the guys don't comment. This talks a lot about babies and being born. Childbirth. There's a there's a birth in every chapter of this one. And even if you've seen the show, it doesn't matter. You should read this book. I loved yeah. this book. There's another one it. that doesn't focus on the births as much as the town and the people. I love that one. There's four and I've read, I read, I think I read three and a half of them. They're good. They're really good. Yes. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Okay. Another one that I have. Oh, go. Oh, I love that one. Sisters. That's a great book. Everybody. Yeah. That's a book that you shouldn't, you should read before you die. The Hiding yeah, Place. Corey Tim Boom. Tomorrow. It's so good. It's so yeah. good. And I, I put this one, this was a book club book. The I love that. Yeah. I think this is like a, you should read this before you die kind of book too. She was um, so good at book club. Huh? I loved her. When she came oh, on book club. She was so great. What, I yeah. mean, like, I feel so like, I can't believe that she came on our book club. I know. It was amazing. I can't believe I got to talk to a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. That was, it was, crazy. it was so good. So not on, I didn't have a copy of, I think this is, maybe this is the one I lent to Faith. Um, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, Maya Angelou. I, yes, that's really good. I she loved, she was amazing. Amazing. And to read like what she overcame and to think about, the thing that I loved about that particular book was, I don't know if you remember this, but she was abused and then she didn't speak. Right. For like like years, like three years of her life, she, she wouldn't talk. And now she and, is a woman that we look to for words. Well, she has one of the most iconic yeah. voices yeah. in modern history. She was a poet. I mean, like if you play- You remember, remember when she was, um, she read her poem for the inauguration of Bill Clinton? I'll never yes. forget it. I'll never yes. forget it. 
I remember her on, I, this is not the same as the inauguration, but I, I remember her on Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, as a child watching Maya Angelou on Sesame Street. And yeah. I think like how amazing it was that for a woman who wouldn't speak for a year, yeah. that she, her voice, her actual voice is like an American treasure. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, that's one. And that's one that I think I want to read again. I want to read that one too. Okay, I've got one that I just recently read, but I'm putting it on my must read list because I loved it so much, but it was written in 1936, okay? How okay. to win friends and influence people. Okay, but this is a fiction book club, Emily. <laughs> no, we're talking about memoirs. Listen, this guy That's a talks, memoir? Well, no, but he talks so much about Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln, and I felt like I was like in, he was, he was teaching it like it was today's news, but it to me it's history. But it, I'm telling you, I loved this book. It's okay. not fiction, but it is a it is a must read. I loved it. Okay. Yeah. I might read it. <laughs> you can borrow my copy. No, I'll just buy you one. Just kidding. Um, do you think that the audio book would be good? Um, I couldn't. I don't. I looked for it and I could only find it abridged. So that's why I was like, well, I'll just do that. I maybe I don't remember if I could find the whole thing. So I don't know. I'm just telling you, I loved it way more than I thought I was going to. Okay. Um, these two. Okay, wait, let me see. What's another one that I put on my list? Oh, have you ever read Their Eyes Were Watching God by- I um, have. I, I thought, I almost put that down because I will never forget reading it. I read it in 10th grade. I I read that book like in the last year or two and I really loved it and I loved like it was very impressionable the scene with the hurricane and the dog the bites yes. the guy and yep. all of that yeah um, I, uh, I highly recommend her her name is um Zora her Neil I can't I don't know why I can't pull it up at the moment yeah. but their eyes were watching God it's a it's an American classic mm -hmm. and um I put that on my list. Okay, here's two book club books. As I was looking through the book club books, I was like, oh, I, I, love, that oh, I love that one. Very oh, hard to not pick the book club books. Yes, well, I have two more book club books because, I mean, they are my, I get to pick the books, so they are my favorites. So uh, I don't know which one. I'm going to do these double because we are getting close to time, but I don't care if we go over a little bit this time. But so here's here's two. Uh, yes, Wild. Pigeons of, and Wild. So did you ever read the other book by the Kitchens of the Midwest, the logger one? No, I haven't read you. Queen no. of the... I need to. I want yeah. to. It's just like, you know, you read a book and then you just don't circle back to the yeah. author. Um, I do Kitchens... circle back to that one. I always think I need to read it because I loved that one. It was so funny. I love books about food, too. And... Oh, I just, I, this book was so creatively written too with the short stories yeah. and then wild. I remember this was one of the very first audiobooks that I ever listened to years and years ago. And I remember I pulled up to like the grocery store, Nordstrom Rack, wherever I was going. And I was listening, to, I was listening while I was driving and I couldn't get out of the car. I was sitting in the car listening because <laughs> it was the scene where you thought that where she was maybe going to get raped. And I was like, oh, oh, God, I can't. I can't go. And I don't think I had AirPods at the time. <laughs> it's just like, I can't. So it's just sitting okay. in my car in this parking lot reading, listening. All right. So that, that reminds me of this other one that I don't even, I don't know if you've read this one. But this, sometimes what I think makes a good book is one you just can't forget. Like, you remember where yeah. you were. felt. So there was a snow day here. And I had a bunch of college students come and play with my kids. And I sat inside and I read the book in one day. Okay. The Fault in Our Stars. Oh, I love that book. Well, yeah. you know I love cancer books. Yes. Yeah. Well, this one is, it's so good. So yeah. good and way better than the movie. Way better. And way better than most of his other books. He's, he's depressing. Yeah, I've never made it through any of his other books, but I loved that one. This, this is a good one. I found it in Hattie's room. Um, okay, Silas Jennings, is there a correct children ranking? Um, <laughs> of course not. That's Emily's oldest son. Okay, so I only have, let's see, 
Well, I have I have two books left that we haven't covered. Okay, so okay. the fiction book. I know you're gonna agree with this one. It may be in your pile. What? Uva. Oh, have you read any of his other books? I've heard they're very good. Uh, I read his last one called Normal Bear People. Tell I think. Anxious oh yeah. People. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not as good as Uva. Oh, I love that guy. Uh, what was it called? A Man Called Uva. If you've oh. never read A Man Called yeah. Uva, yeah. really great. Um, okay, you got any more? I have one more also. Um, okay. Coming by Michelle Obama. That is one of my favorite memoirs. And it's read by her, so I loved yes. that. And I just felt like, okay, I could be your friend. I, I felt a connection. I loved the explanation of her life growing up and her life in the White House. I loved her book. 100% me too. I closed the book and I was like, me and Michelle Obama, we're best friends. Best friends. She, she doesn't know it, but. Listen, sometimes I truly think, I wonder what Michelle Obama's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> or what would Michelle Obama do? <laughs> what is she doing? Is she just sitting there reading? Because I think that's what she's doing. I don't think so. I think she's, she's as busy as she's ever been. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my last one. I think you've read this book. Right. Memoir. The Glass Castle. Oh, gosh, yes. I couldn't find my copy of it. No, I listened that's, to that. That's, that's a great good. memoir. I've yeah. read all of her books. Oh, really? There's only like, there's only like three or four. Um, no, that's a really None of them even come close to The Glass Castle. Because that one's about her life. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, okay. Well, Emily, thanks. Well, I know you didn't enjoy that conversation as much as I did because... There are very few people on the planet that I would rather talk to than my sister. And we love to talk about books. This is my big stack of books right here. And I hope that you had a great time with us tonight. We talked about the reading list and we talked about what would be on our reading list. And it was just a great time. So if you like this video, comment below. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know what would be on your reading list. If you had a just in case you need it list that you were leaving to people of the books that have impacted your life, the stories that have stayed with you and make sure you like, subscribe, do all the things. Hey, if you want to be a part of the Holly Furtick book club officially, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to hollyfurtick.com and give me your email address. I promise you I'm not going to send you a bunch of emails. I'm only going to send you an email once a month to tell you what we're reading and when we're meeting and um, just to let you know in case you want to join us for the live discussion. So join us for the at the Holly Furtick Book Club. Go to hollyfurtick.com and I hope that overall you have a huge list of books for you to read of my favorite books and don't forget to let me know what some of your favorite books are and I'll see you back here next time.